Welcome to Black History Beyond the Textbooks where today we will celebrate the life and legacy of Mary Ellen Pleasant, a 19th century entrepreneur, financier, real estate magnate, and abolitionist who was arguably the first self-made millionaire of African American heritage. So, buckle your seatbelts and take a trip with me into the past as we visit Mary Ellen Pleasant. Mary Ellen Pleasant was born on August 19, 1814. There are various accounts about where she was born and whether she was born free or not. She claimed that she was born free in Philadelphia. As a young girl, Mary Ellen moved without her parents to the island of Nantucket in Massachusetts. Nantucket had one of the largest free black communities in the state of Massachusetts. Mary Ellen lived with Mary Hussey, an older white woman who ran a dry goods store. Mary Ellen worked in the store for years and learned how to run a small business. Mary Ellen left Nantucket when she was in her early twenties and moved to Boston. Little is known about her life in Boston, but she most likely worked in a tailor shop, where she met her first husband, James Smith. James was a wealthy abolitionist. He left Mary Ellen a significant inheritance when he died in the 1840s. Mary Ellen remarried several years later. Her new husband was named John James Pleasant. They had one daughter together, whom they named Lizzie. Mary Ellen Pleasant moved to San Francisco in 1852 during the Gold Rush. There she worked as a domestic servant and chef for wealthy businessmen. White, wealthy men were always very dismissive of an African-American woman in their midst, and Pleasant took advantage of that. She used her proximity and charm to pick up countless valuable investing tips by listening in on her employer's conversations. In fact, one historian posits the possibility that Pleasant worked as a domestic servant specifically safety. She initially went by the name Mrs. Ellen Smith, rather than Pleasant, and was considered by her neighbors to be a white landlady and cook. She was Mrs. Pleasant to former slaves who worked at any of her businesses, which included livery stables, a dairy farm, a tenant farm, and a money-lending business. She was careful to keep her name out of Underground Railroad, related transactions. However, among other abolitionists, she was known as Mrs. Pleasance. Among the transactions that she made during Underground Railroad activities, she assisted fugitive slaves in obtaining safe transportation, housing, and jobs. She funded her efforts through the monies that she had left from her first husband's estate. When she came to California, it was possible for fugitive slaves to be apprehended from other states and blacks were unable to give testimony in courts. She became a one-woman social agency that provided for the transportation of black men and women to California. Once there, she ensured their daily needs were met until they were employed or had established businesses, both of which she helped them accomplish. She helped William Marcus West establish a boarding house that doubled as a safe house for runaways as was her house, and that of wealthy white homeowners. She helped enslave people, who traveled with their owners, to escape while in California. She attained legal resources for black people when attempts were made to extradite them out of California and return them to slavery. For instance, she paid for legal fees and housing for Archie Lee during his case of 1857 in which a judge from Texas ultimately ruled against California's state constitution and for the slaveholder. Since testimony of African Americans was not allowed in court, she worked and funded the repeal of the ban testimony law. She campaigned for the end of slavery in the state. She became known as the Mother of Civil Rights in California. For her efforts, she helped women of any ethnicity who were at significant risk on their own in the early San Francisco days by helping them with housing and clothing, as well as advising them about how to carry themselves and dress. She also helped women find homes for their children if they could not support them. She arranged marriages between wealthy men and her protégés, who kept detailed records about the men's activities, illegitimate children, infidelities, and political and financial shenanigans, which may have been used for blackmail. She developed a long-lasting partnership with Thomas Bell, a white banker and investor in the East. 
Thomas Bell helped her pursue some of her investments as part of what would be a year-long business partnership forged to make both parties extremely wealthy. To avoid discrimination or simply being questioned about how a black woman could accumulate such a substantial fortune, Pleasant reportedly put many of her investments in the name of Bell, which helped her make money and keep her riches and true financial status a secret. The two bought shares in laundries, dairies, restaurants, and even Wells Fargo Bank. Her investments in businesses made her and Thomas Bell $30 million, equivalent to about $800 million in 2023, by 1875. After the end of the war, she invested in the same types of businesses, but more luxurious accommodations, which drew the elite. Mrs. Mary Pleasant spent her money and developed plans to build a large mansion in Sonoma County called Beltane Ranch, now Calabasas Creek Open Space Preserve, in 1890 and 1891, which outwardly seemed as if it was the Bell's residence. She assumed the role of housekeeper for the Bells, but it was not a secret in the city that she ran the household, managed the servants, and managed the relationships among the Bells. She lived the last twenty years of her life in a thirty-room mansion that spanned two San Francisco city blocks. She had fifteen people living in her house. There were five members of Thomas Bell's family, including his wife Teresa, or Teresa, Bell, and their children Frederick, Mary Teresa, and Viola S. Bell. Aside from herself, the rest were servants, including two black men and a young Native American couple, and a five-year-old boy. While the Bells and Pleasant lived together, Pleasant controlled the combined Bell and Pleasant money. If Teresa wanted money, she asked Pleasant for the money, who thought about it, and if the request seemed reasonable, she checked in with Thomas Bell for his reaction. After Thomas Bell died in 1892, Teresa, who had emotional and mental instability, claimed that her husband had been manipulated and that tens of thousands of dollars had been stolen by Mrs. Pleasant. When the case went to trial, it was difficult to discern what were Bell's and what were Pleasant's assets, because the transactions were so entwined. Pleasant could show that she paid for the construction of her mansion, but she left it because it was ruled that ownership should be transferred to Teresa. She still had her investments, but she was cash poor, and the courts declared that Pleasant was insolvent. That same year, she had donated today's equivalent of about $10,000 to help found St. Mary Collage. Pleasant complied with Teresa to leave the house in 1899. As soon as she made arrangements, she moved into a six-room apartment on Webster Street and began a legal crusade of her own to recover her property, including a diamond collection. The case was not settled by the time of Pleasant's death. She lived on Webster Street in San Francisco with a maid. She was visited by the Bell children there. They called her Auntie, and she called them Dear. She turned down an offer by a reporter to pay generously for her stories of people from the past, but she said she would never betray her friends. She became quite weakened and near death and a friend, Olive Sherwood, took her to her house, the Lyman Sherwood residence on Filbert Street. She died there on January 11, 1904 and was laid to rest at 2K Cemetery in Napa, California. Her grave site is marked with a metal sculpture, and the site was dedicated on June 11, 2011. Her gravestone contains the words, She was a friend of John Brown, as she had requested before her death. Her former mansion was demolished, and has been replaced by the Mary Ellen Pleasant Memorial Park. Mary Ellen Pleasant passed away on January 11, 1904. She left behind an incredible legacy as an entrepreneur and financier. Mary Ellen Pleasant was an incredible woman who used her intelligence and resourcefulness to overcome the obstacles she faced as a black woman in the 19th century. She built a fortune through savvy investments and used her wealth to support abolitionist causes and help those in need. Thank you for joining me as we celebrated the life and legacy of Mary Ellen Pleasant. I hope you were inspired by her story of determination, success, and activism. <laughs>